part two of this uh, mini-series, so to speak. Part two is also the final part already, but nonetheless, the review on the Quick Mill after using it for half a year. Specifically the Quick Mill 3035, uh, this is the Black Edition, as you might have noticed uh, by the looks. Uh, previously, we discussed um, uh, for the daily use, how do you use it, how do you make your cup of espresso. Um, and we started a little bit on the cleanup as well. Uh, today we're going to continue there. Uh, we already discussed cleaning the basket. Uh, we discussed the can uh, for throwing away your ground coffee after using it. And uh, so from there to continue, uh, as you noticed, I used a temper. Uh, it should be clean. And as you can see, there's a little bit on it this time around. Which usually doesn't happen, but it can happen. You just make it clean again and it's all good. Uh, yeah, I like to keep it clean just in general. Uh, usually I don't even need to wipe it or anything because as I mentioned before, the coffee usually doesn't stick. Uh, there's also a little temper on the machine itself, which you could use. Uh, then you can just press the piston up into it and temp it like that. Uh, it's fine, it's a way to use it. I like using a separate temper better, uh, but that's personal preference, so that's all okay. Uh, the dripping tray is uh, very decent, very wide. Uh, it's very big, so you could actually use it for a lot more coffees than we make with it. But you're gonna want to clean it uh, on a weekly basis, I'd say. If uh, you have time to do it more often, that's absolutely fine, of course. Uh, but if you're going to wait with it, with, with cleaning the driven tray for like a month, then that's not going to look pretty. So keep that in mind. That is something to do. Uh, I do it once every weekend uh, just to make sure that everything stays, uh, yeah, hygienic. Um, another good part to know is that the top uh, part, this plate on top, uh, it gets uh, nice and warm, uh, so you can keep the cups on top and it will heat up the cups as well. Uh, especially nice if you make a cappuccino, uh, espressos, I usually pour them in uh, cups that have like a uh, double layered structure so that they keep it warm anyways. But especially for the cappuccinos, uh, it's nice to have a warm cup. Uh, so I tend to turn it on early, uh, let it heat up a bit for the machine as well as uh, the cups on top. If you're in a hurry though, this machine is warm in no time. That's insane. I was absolutely blown away by it and it's never disappointed me. So if I was ever in a hurry and I needed a cup of coffee quickly, I could just turn it on and grab whatever the hell I needed and then it was pretty much already warm and I could just start pouring by the time I had ground my coffee. So that's great. Um, I think we've covered all uh, the basics of uh, the daily cleanup, except for the part that comes after frothing the milk, which is what we're going to do next then. For frothing the milk, we have this little buddy here. Uh, there is also a plastic tube that you can put on it, but I don't like to use it. I think it's unhygienic and it's not that useful. So I just keep it like this on the bare steel. Uh, mentioned before, this is the button you want to use. To make it steam, the light needs to be turned off before you start. I turn it on right now, then the light will go on as well at that point, because then it needs to constantly keep heating it up, because it takes a lot of energy. As you see, it can get the space going, and it starts working faster. At first, you keep it deeper, not too deep, to warm up the milk and then slowly lift it. I just went a little too fast there. And take your time with it. As you could see, I had my hand underneath it just now, and at some point it starts feeling rather hot. So it's not gonna be very nice to touch it anymore. That's probably around the point where the milk is hot enough as well 
to the point that you don't want to heat it too much further. Uh, if the milk gets too hot, it doesn't go well for it. Uh, it's not good for the milk and you're gonna get, uh, well, not the right texture you want. Uh, you want that beautiful microphone and you're not gonna get that if it's too hot. You're not gonna get it if it's too cold either. Uh, so you always do this a little bit. The big bubbles go out and it's all good. And you can pour it in. Uh, now, right now there's no coffee in this one because uh, I just drank my espresso. But you can see it's got a nice texture. And there you see, if there was coffee in there as well, you'd have that nice crema, a little bit mixed in with the foam. Uh, and that would make that beautiful top layer you would usually find on your cappuccino. So that's all great. Uh, yeah, I'll put that away for a bit. Because then comes the cleaning. Now, of course, the uh, little cup I just put away, this one, it's on the small side. Uh, if you want to make it easy for yourself, especially if you want to do barista style uh, forms and shapes in your phone, you're definitely going to want one size bigger than this. Uh, but if it's just for simple use, simple daily use for yourself or a quick cappuccino, this is perfect. Uh, you can just clean it with water and a towel and it's all good. Um, this one though, first step before you clean it is use the water button and beam a little bit of water out. Alright, I do this because uh, if the last thing I used is the steam, this machine is still working at a heightened temperature. So if I were to just turn this one on for my next cup of coffee right after, there's pretty much steaming water coming out. So you're gonna want to clean it first off by pushing the water. You'll also clear the pipe on the inside of any dirt that was still in it from the milk. And I do this on a little towel because the towel is all wet and warm and that works for the milk like a charm. Because you see, it's all gone. It's that easy. And all I need to do for the surroundings is just this. And it's all clean again. So that's how easy this is. And voila. Like nothing ever happened. This one can go back inside. As long as the pipe is on the outside, all the water will be sent to the pipe. As soon as it gets in here, all the water will be turned to the shower again. Uh, I think also what we didn't cover last time uh, uh, for cleaning the shower itself. Uh, there's two ways, actually three. You can just turn the shower on. Of course it cleans itself because it pours the water out. By pouring the water out it will be cleaned. Now you also can do it with a little towel. So that's very clean. And there is this little thing you can get with it. This one is nice to get into the edges around the shower. Now I usually don't do it because I always make sure that the edges of the piston are clean because I always take off any dirt that's on the edges. So there's hardly anything in these edges. But every now and then I do do it just to make sure that everything stays clean. Um, so that's three ways to clean the shower as well. Um, of course, every now and then you're going to want to take the shower apart and really clean it, you give it a deep cleaning effectively. It's not a usual thing to do though. It's actually good to not clean it too often either. Um, so that's all good. Uh, one last little detail on the side here. There's the water inlet. Uh, as you can see, this little pipe takes in the water. There's two pipes that are just right here as well. Uh, I believe one's for the air, the other one I'm not 100% sure. I think it's the remaining water that can be poured back into the bucket. It's all good. It's all nice. It stays very well clean. Uh, one thing that can happen is that, of course, if it's there for a long time, uh, say you've got it there for two weeks, and you filled it up really well at first, Every now and then it's good to just clean this one as well. Uh, you can just take it out, it's not, it's not hard. You can just take it like that, take it sideways out. Give that one 
there. And then you can clean this one. It's very simple, not hard. You can just wash it with water and put it back in. Once it's washed, you can just put the container back in like that. And it's all good. Do let us know if you have any further questions on this as well. Uh, for now, I believe this is it. Uh, this is how we uh, daily uh, use our quick mill 3035 for a good cup of coffee. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. And don't forget to check out the rest of our channel or our website if you want to know more about coffee, food, travel, whatever else we have to give. Or if you want to know something else about us or we may be able to give, do let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye.